new National Infantry Museum, among the many highlights of Ted Gundy's visit to Fort Benning, Georgia. Now it's about time for his impossible shot, but not before a couple more surprises that'll leave him speechless. Once a sniper, always a sniper. The black hat is the grandest prize an Army marksman can earn, and Ted Gundy is about to see just how much he's revered. So on behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, soldiers and civilians of the United States Army Marksmanship Unit, sir, I'd like to present you this black hat of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit. Oh, you don't know. Congratulations, sir. You don't know how much it means to me. We've only presented about eight black hats to non-members of the Army Marksmanship Unit. The wearer of the black hat is a member of an elite they're members of the best shooters in the world. You don't know how much you guys, I'll never forget it. Sir, that means, that means the world to us. But now it's time for Ted to show the world he deserves the black hat. The World War II sniper will attempt a shot he'd never dreamed possible, hitting a target with modern equipment at a thousand yards. He'll be coached by the finest sniper team in the world, two-time international champions, AMU Sergeants Robbie Johnson and Jason St. John. He walked up and he came over and he was expressed to us that he was honored to be here with us. And I guess not trying to be insulting to the man, I just thought that was silly because, I mean, the honor is definitely all ours. So to meet someone that was actually there and, um, and was a sniper back then and, you know, was in the Battle of the Bulge and Bastogne and, man, it's just a great honor for me. Ted will be starting with a shot from 300 yards, and this will truly be a blast from the past. He hasn't seen his Army-issued 1903 Springfield A-4 since leaving the service in 1944. That's why Val Forget has flown in. His company, Navy Arms, specializes in making exact replicas of historic guns. So he's made a special trip from Maryland to make yet another surprise presentation to Ted Gundy. And on behalf of Shooting USA, Navy Arms, and a grateful nation, we want to give you an exact replica of your 1903 A4 that you used in the war. God bless you, sir. He's representative of, of millions of men and women that, that serve our country every day. You want to let him know how much it means to all of us as Americans for what he sacrificed. So he's got his rifle. He's got his world-class instructors. Now it's up to him to ring a target from 300 yards. Okay, I'm dead on. You, it's all on you, sir. Damn, good hit. The first shot's good. But Ted's not satisfied. That's uh, three inches below center mass and three inches left. If you want to go one more, you can try to hit that gong. You just barely missed the gong. So one more shot from 300 yards with a World War II era rifle at a dead center hit. Yeah, you, got, you got the gong that time, sir. Dead center. But you walked him right up. One, two, three. You couldn't ask for any better performance. So you take direction better than my partner does. I don't think so. And now he'll have one more chance to take direction. The next shot is the one he's been waiting for, a thousand yards. I couldn't, I couldn't even dream in a thousand years how, how you would do that, how you'd even see a, a human that far away, you know. So you're anxious to find out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll have the latest technology on his side for this one. The O3 Springfield is replaced with the AMU's custom Remington 700, one of the most accurate rifles in the world. Modern day snipers also have the luxury of working in teams. Sergeant Johnson is the shooter, while Sergeant St. John is the spotter. Weather conditions, environmentals as they call them, are the key to calculating the perfect shot. For every mile an hour of wind that we're looking at right there, we're moving the bullet 10 inches. And once the calculations are made, it's up to Sergeant Johnson to take the shot. And then he'll say, ready, and then I'll tell him I'm ready by telling him to send it. 
If he doesn't get it off in three seconds, then we're looking at major changes possibly in environmentals, and so we would have to restart. Robbie, go ahead and give me a light half to a heavy quarter. Favor towards that heavy quarter, though, okay? Send it. And that one was one inch, one inch right of center and about three inches low. Ted Gundy has been watching intently. If you'd like to shoot down, we'd, we'd be honored to have you shoot our rifle, sir. Okay. This is the moment this old veteran has been dreaming about, trying to put a bullet on a target at a thousand yards away. I, I hope that I can hit the target, but uh, I, would, I would, if I was betting money, I'd bet nine to one that I don't. <laughs> Well, that's a long, long way. It is. But he's got the equipment, he's got the instruction, and perhaps most importantly, he's got the experience. We have so much respect that those guys could take the rifles back then and do pretty much the same things we're doing now. It's finally time for Ted Gundy's dream shot. Nervous. It's all right, sir. It's going to hit. That's it. That's it. Actually, it was much better than a good hit. Though no one could tell from more than half a mile away, Ted's first attempt is a headshot on the steel target. And I can't explain it how my heart was a pounding and I was breathing heavy and luck I'd even hit it. Look. Well, he might have gotten away with saying he was lucky on the first shot, but not the second. You just hit him right in the mouth. Or the third. Should be good. Another one right in the mouth. Huh? Right in the mouth. Perfect shot, sir. At 84, Ted Gundy's still got his sniper skills. You got about a five inch group here, which is well within or even better than the capabilities of what that gun can do. That's something yeah. to be very proud of. You know, yeah, uh, I just couldn't believe I could hit anything that far away. Whatever age we are, we get to that point where you're like, I can still do that, you know, and I think he proved today he still can. It's a five inch group at a thousand yards. It's impossible. So it's perfect shooting that brings the perfect end to a perfect week for an American veteran. Ted Gundy, still a soldier, still a sniper, still a hero. This has been one of, the, <laughs> one of the nicest things that ever happened in my life.